I am convinced live streaming adds value to a community in ways few other things do. If you're a house of worship, you have access to people who can't make it into your building. If you're streaming a sporting event, you're able to add value to the parents or grandparents who can't make it to the game. When you do a wedding or a community event or a city council meeting, you're adding value to the community in which you operate. So I'd like to share with you my three biggest mistakes I've made when trying to produce a live stream. Audio, video, and lighting are obviously the big three that we need to be concerned with when we produce a live stream. Now, I stream sporting events and worship services more than I stream anything else. And these two types of events have a set amount of lighting and it seldom changes. Now, in the, in the worship setting, you're going to be able to turn lights up or down or refocus lights. But once they are set, we're probably not going to change them much just for the live stream. So we work with what we have. And of course, outdoors, when we get what the sun gives us or what the clouds give us, we don't generally add when we're trying to stream a baseball or soccer game. So we're going to toss lighting out the window. And let me say this, first of all be prepared think through the event before you roll up to the venue i don't know how many times i've gotten where i needed to be only to remember that i have forgotten a microphone something that's really much needed or the windscreen the dead cat that goes on the microphone or the worst of all having my microphone having my dead cat but forgetting my cold shoe mount that it goes on so it's just hanging loose off of my camera not pointed at anything by the way, available at jdubhoffman.com slash merchandise if you'd like to buy one of your own. So the first of my biggest mistakes is in the field of audio. I am bad about overestimating my audio level. I have streamed many events where I thought the audio level was just right, only to find out after the stream, people are telling me the whole time, I can't hear what's going on there, or your audio levels are too loud. It should be a common bit of knowledge in your bag of knowledge. Audio is at least half of your video. If people can't understand or hear you, they will not watch. Flip it around. If your video is bad, but they can hear you, especially for sporting events, they'll go ahead and listen to what's happening even if the video is struggling. Audio is incredibly important, and Overestimating audio is my biggest mistake, number one. If my volume is too low, if my audio is too hot and it starts clipping, it's distorted, you're not going to listen to what I have to say. So we want to make sure before we begin streaming or as we begin streaming that our audio levels are where we need them to be. The best way to do this is go ahead and tune in to the stream once it has started, use a secondary device and listen to what the end product is. If you don't have one, grab one of the folks that's at the place where you're streaming and ask them to do the same thing just to listen to make sure that audio is where it needs to be. It's even more valuable than listening to what the monitors are telling you because you're getting the end result whenever you listen to the stream itself. And unlike recording, where there are tools to fix bad audio, you can take out background noise or you can bring up the level if you need to. When you're live streaming, you need to have it right before you begin. Otherwise, folks will click off of your live stream. The second biggest mistake I've made whenever I've been live streaming has to do with video. And usually it's about the framing of my field of view. Now, framing is incredibly important because if I don't have what I need in the field of view, then my value drops greatly in what I'm offering to the family of the kid at bat or to the folks who are trying to enjoy a worship service. So knowing exactly where I am in relation to my cameras is going to be very important. Another part of framing is going to be obstructions. If there are obstructions in front of what you're trying to show, it's going to be a distraction that people will click off of because of. That can be true no matter what the venue is obstructions will kill a live stream. So I want to make sure that if I'm doing a, a sporting event, 
I'm peeking through any netting or fencing that is there. And I know that our eyes at some point will be forgiving and we'll kind of get used to looking through a net. But if you can, go ahead and peek through instead of backing off and streaming through a net that's visible on your screen. If you're talking about streaming an event that's at a bigger field like soccer or, or football, you're going to want to get your cameras up high enough so that they can be over any traffic that's on the sideline. I use a nine foot light stand tripod to make sure I'm elevated enough and that gives me the clearance I need to make sure I don't have obstructions moving in front of what I'm trying to stream. And for my church streams, we went to a lot of trouble to hang, to suspend our center camera so that it is about eye level with the folks who are on the platform. And we went ahead and gave it power as well while we were at it. It was well worth the trouble of climbing up on that ladder and making sure we had the right level. Now, making sure I also keep my horizontal plane, my horizon, level is going to be a huge part of it as well. You don't want to see things running uphill either direction. So if I have my camera pointed this way, at some point something in my brain says, that's just not right. I can't continue to watch. So we do our best to make sure that framing includes keeping a level horizon for the viewers. And speaking of power, because a great majority of our live streams are mobile, on-location setups, power is the third biggest mistake I've made when trying to live stream. And what I mean is not having my equipment powered. I have rolled up to venues many times and realized that one or two of my cameras are not charged. Or even worse, my battery backups are not charged. And that means that I'm going to have to either lower the number of cameras, the number of shots that I have for that particular stream, or it's going to die at some point in my stream. And I'm, I'm just counting the minutes down to, to, to hope maybe I can get that stream finished before my cameras give out. Scrambling for an electrical outlet just before a stream starts is not the way you want to start a stream because it creates such incredible anxiety and, and you are really rushed to try to get there. So keep your batteries charged if you're going to be live streaming. And an extra mistake that I have made is allowing copyrighted music in. And this happens at weddings, it happens at church services, it happens at at sporting events, all kinds of copyrighted music just finds its way to the microphone sometimes. It may be the field next door that's playing walk-up songs. You're not even streaming that, but it's going to hit you with a copyright infringement. Now, if you're not monetized, that's no big deal on YouTube. If you're streaming to Facebook, you may well just get the stream stopped. It may well completely shut your stream down and you don't even know it. This is one place where Game Changer actually has a benefit because if you stream through Game Changer's servers, you're not hitting Facebook or YouTube. They're actually going to Game Changer to watch the uh, the stream. And so that may be one benefit that we find for, for Game Changer users is the, the copyright infringements are rare, if ever. My hope is that you can learn from my mistakes. These are three that I've made, and maybe knowing them, you can prepare for them and not make them yourself.